Hey folks, this is you speaking again. We reached the end of a big section and the section was how to build a PLC trainer. Remember that the PLC trainer is made of two parts. One part is the control board containing the PLC itself. And the second part is the output board containing the outputs, DC motor, fan, five lights, and an emergency switch, okay? So I'm going to show you now Unlike the little program we've made before just for checking our PLC, I'm going to show you a more complex program involving a lot of timers and the use of the data memory area uh, to see what can we do with the PLC and why do we need the second section, the output trainer. Let's say I'm going to put a power on. In that moment, if I start the PLC program, uh, everything looks like working fine. Remember that the switches we have, remember we build them together. There are actually two switches in one. Here is the toggle switch position because it stays when you push it. And on the other side is the momentary, momentary switch. You see here, there is a little LED showing exactly the LED over the number seven because the switches are numbered from zero to seven. There are eight of them, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on the input number eight, which is the next one, we have our sensor. You see, when I put the hand in front of the sensor, the light here for the number eight is popping up, okay? So I'm going to start the program by pressing momentarily the switch zero, like this. And you're going to see that something happens on the outputs you can watch the LEDs here for the outputs. They start moving. However, the PLC does not clearly tell you what happens, what the program does. It's only if you really know the instructions and to watch the program on your computer. But other than that, you won't see it. This is why we have to connect both together, the control board to the auto trainer. So we're going to use our flat cable, remember, our flat cables here. We're going to connect one end to the control board and the other end, we stop it to the output board. So now we have the outputs connected. We have the PLC connected. We start it again. Hey, this is the fan starting. Now the lights, the motor, by the way, the lights, they go back and forth. You see now they go to your left. And now they're gonna go to your right, you see? So at the end of the light sequence is either the fan going on or the motor going on. And the motor one going on, it goes following both sequences, forward and reverse. You can see it turning, that's it. But there's more to that. Not only I can stop the program anytime, because remember we used, even in the previous program, we used the sensor for stopping. There's one thing, we can stop it anytime we want. If you think anything may go wrong with the outputs, you can just press the uh, emergency switch. We reset it. Everything goes again, because the PS actually didn't stop. But there's more about that. I said not only a lot of timers are used because they control the duration, the lights are staying on, the motor is staying on and the fan turns, but we can change the pace in real time like this. Now it's going very slowly. The lights, they stay on each of them about one second. The fan and the motor, they still turn for 2.5 to 3 seconds each. And we can change the pace. If I just press the momentary switch like this, you're going to see the lights. You see they go faster. So now they stay on half a second instead of one second. But I can change it more. I can make them going faster. Just watch the lights. You see this? And there's more. I can make them going faster. Just watch. 
You see? The lights can go faster. And I keep and establish a kind of fancy pace. You're going to see the red stays longer than the others. Right now, you see? So the lights are staying on very, very short time, except for the red, which stays longer. This can be done if you know how to use the data memory location because the timers are taking their set value from a place the values are stored in the data memory area, okay? And there's another thing, the PLC. He was working now, and let's suppose for whatever reason, the power goes off. It may happen. Let's say the power comes back on one hour later. When you start the program again, the PLC is restarting from the last pace you established already. Remember there was the fancy pace? Just watch. Now, if I change the pace, you see this one, and the power goes off for whatever reason, everything stops. When the power comes back, if you restart the program, the lights are going to work following the last sequence we stopped before. And again, if anything goes wrong, the emergency switch is there. You can reset it anytime. Okay. That's how our program is operating. So this is one of the things you can do with the PLC if you learn how to use instructions, like timers, counters, data memory area, and other commands, okay? We're gonna watch it one more time. See, it goes faster. We can stop any time. We can restart, it's going to restart from the last space we established. You see this? And remember, we can also have access to a fancy pace. This is the one. Okay. So, I hope you like that section and uh, Hopefully we're going to meet each other for another section, okay? Thank you very much guys for the patience. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.